Hey everybody, welcome to Super Comic Fun Time. It is March 13th, 20, I almost said 1983, 2018, and that can only mean one thing, and that is the Commandy uh, Omnibus is out. So here's your hastily drawn cartoon. It's a pretty bad one, but the hastily drawn cartoon has only one purpose, and that is to hide the mailing label. And it does that, so it's uh, perfect for this episode. And so, like, what do I know about Commandy? Practically nothing. Like, um, Commandy shows up in Crisis on Infinite Earths and uh, rips off a line from E.T. No, it's the ape. There's this really intelligent ape, and Commandy, uh, the ape uh, dies, and Commandy goes, no, and I can't quite remember the whole thing, but the ape ends it by saying, be good. And I'm like, what? What? And uh, ooh, look, here we go. Let's see what we've got here. Animals are the masters and men. Oh, animals are the masters of men. And the world is a madhouse. Oh, cool. This looks so cool. So here, don't know what that is. He's kind of bashing a dinosaur with something. Look at this one. It looks almost like that dinosaur is about to chomp down on the other dinosaur's head. This looks interesting. I can't wait to dig into Commandy. Because like unlike other things, like I've run into the new gods from time to time. And I know last summer they did the Commandy challenge. But um, I haven't read that yet. And I'm pretty far behind, so I, I don't know that I will be getting it soon. Because I think I'm going to do one more opening next week and then slow down for a while so that I can catch up. So here we've got this uh, Jack Kirby Commandy, The Last Boy on Earth, the omnibus. So it's nice and thick. It's not as thick as the uh, other one, the New Gods one, which is an excellent one, which I'm still reading. And I guess there are some misprints in there. I think I mentioned it before. And apparently there's going to be a new printing, but I don't know how to get, how to exchange mine. So I will have to, have to keep an ear out for that. So here we go. Taking the cellophane off. This one looks like it's fared a little better, but we'll know when we get the cover off and take a peek underneath. It's like a lot of times the books, they bang around inside the Amazon boxes and then you get some damage to the corners. So here we go. Things unbelievable but true. Mankind was once the master of this world, bestriding her continents and subjecting her lesser creatures. But then came Cataclysm! In its aftermath, humanity's soaring monuments have tumbled into ruin, and scattered remnants of its once proud civilizations now labor under the yoke of their new animal masters. But there remains one lone youth who nurtures the memories of his ancestors' grand achievements and who is determined to reclaim the freedom that his species that is his species birthright. His name is Commandy, and he may well be the last boy on earth. Cool. Cool. So there's a uh, Jack at the end with his pencil, the typical uh, photo they use. <coughs> so here we have a nice blow up. We have a blow up. It's not of this image, but <coughs> definitely you've got his little curl there. And here, can we see all of that? Jack Kirby up there. And the DC logo down here. Let's see there. Okay. And then in the back, see if I can fix this camera a little bit. And so there you have a cat person. Oh, I wonder if that's where Duke Nukem gets his uh, flying kitty cats from. So let's put the uh, cover someplace where it won't get damaged, the dust cover. And let's take a flip through this book. So here we go, Commandy, 
Like I say, I don't know who these people are, but it looks like clothing is mostly optional. There's some more cat people. The Jack Kirby cartoon. Look how pyramidal his face is. It's like you've got this, um, dun, dun, and it's like a ziggurat or something upside down. And then you've got these pyramids here. Very interesting. Let's see. And look, she's a very strange looking creature. I wonder if she's a human being. So let's see. The last boy on earth, the year of the rat, the thing that grew on the moon. I'm very excited for this because like I say, I know nothing about it. So the uh, introduction is by Mike Royer and uh, all stories written by Jack Kirby unless otherwise noted. And so let's see the fish. So let's see, we can see, so we start off in 72 and this goes through 74, uh, issue 23. And then we flip the page and we continue on 75, March 75, my 10th birthday, I remember it well. I got a magazine called ESP and I loved it. I don't know if they ever printed again. Can't find copies of it online. So it looks like it ran through Issue 40, April of 1976. Okay, afterward by Bruce Tim, Mother Box Files, and the artwork of Jack Kirby. So like here, like I, I think I mentioned in another video, I like to, when I don't know anything about a character, I like to skip over the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the introduction, because sometimes you get like too many insights you don't want. So here we go, The Last Boy on Earth. And this I think I've read was, I think they wanted to do a Planet of the Apes thing, but maybe Planet of the Apes went to Marvel, I don't remember. So Jack Kirby was working for DC at the time and he said he would do Commandy. And I remember if Commandy pre-existed before this, like he was an earlier Jack Kirby, like Ant-Man starts out in kind of a, a horror anthology and it's just the guy who uh, is a scientist and he shrinks down accidentally and he goes and hangs out with ants and then later on they brought him into the Marvel Universe as Hank Pym. And I think his name was Hank Pym. It was all there from the beginning but he wasn't like a superhero. It was just a horror story and you got to see these giant ants. So let's see. So he's on a rubber raft. They have some level of technology in this world. Freak show. His name is Commandy. It may seem like a strange, it may seem like a strange is a sort of dramatic, oh, I'm sorry. His name is Commandy. It may seem like a strange name to you, but actually it is a sort of dramatic tribute to the people who once populated the Commandy or the last old man and his grandson who could well be the last boy on earth. Oh, and this is interesting because in, um, in Grant Morrison's final crisis, you have uh, Command D where, um, is it, I can't remember if it's where Darkseid is brainwashing kids or if it's the military is putting up a stand against Darkseid. Uh, that book was like, I didn't understand it. So, you know, I, I, I read things about, look at that, that is beautiful artwork there. Wow, let's just um, be quiet for a second. Just admire it. Let's see what I can see in my camera. Okay, that's a nice, that's a nice remembrance. Very cool. Okay, and then, so yeah, I guess like it's post-apocalyptic. Got chapter two, the wolf. Look how big that gun looks. In his hand, I guess he's supposed to be a boy, so maybe it looks bigger, but it looks huge. It looks like the animals can talk, so definitely they're going for the Planet of the Apes feel, which, you know, it was huge in the 70s for us kids. We didn't have things like you have today where you put in a Disney tape and you watch it all day. Well, we just didn't have that, so when the Planet of the Apes came on, you had to watch it then, pretty much. You know, I guess some really rich people might have had um, umatic tape drives and stuff like that. Uh, we didn't get that until the 80s. 
and I was already gone. I was uh, in the army by that time. So yeah, we're just gonna flip through, not get too much of the story. Look, there's some more humans there from somewhere. At least I assume they're humans. I shouldn't assume anything, not having read it. But cool kind of face there. Yeah, and the uh, reference I used for my my cartoon, my hastily drawn and very poorly drawn cartoon. Commandy's hands are so big, like, you know, they're just huge on this weapon he's holding. So here we have like apes everywhere. I would have loved this as a kid if I would have known if it was called Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yeah, I would have been right there. Uh, I can tell I'm sniffling a little bit. I shouldn't sniffle. He looks like Peter Parker or uh, Norman Osborn a little bit without all of the weird stuff in his hair. So yeah, he's wearing this kind of cool headband. That's why I was quiet for a little bit. I was just looking at that headband. That's kind of cool. It does look like, you know, they do go and, uh, you know, he does take as much as he can from Planet of the Apes. All making it its own thing. This looks like a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I can't wait to dig into this one. I got so much. So much. I need, uh... Wow, these guys look like silver surfers. Today's playground may be tomorrow's battleground. See it happen in the world of Commandy, last boy on earth. So yeah, this is reminding me a bit of um, the uh, newsboys, the newsboy gang or whatever they were called in um, the new gods. Meet tough tune. It seems like Kirby, he just like reveled in creating these. Oh my God, he's reading the demon. This is another collection I want to get. I, I think the uh, hardcover is out of print, but Etrigan the demon. I found him in um, uh, William Moore's, uh, not William Moore, but, um, oh, you know, the guy with the beard, that Moore. I found him in his Swamp Thing run. Wow, it's kind of cool. He's reading a comic book in one of Jack Kirby's comic books. That is really cool. Very, very cool. I like that a lot. Maybe I'm going to take a... Oh, let's see what we've got here. Can we... Yeah, we've got too much glare there. Enjoy that. I'm going to snap a shot for the cover. I think I'm going to use this as the cover. a few because you never know which ones take. Look, the back cover is ripped off. That is cool. Was, there, that's the uh, that's the cover of the book. Yep. This almost looks like a word balloon here. Edited, written, and drawn by Jack Kirby. Lettered by Mike Royer. Yeah, one thing I read in... Um, one of those books I read, not Marvel, the untold story, but the one uh, about Marvel and DC is the original inker they got for Jack Kirby. He was fast, but he also kind of sold secrets to Marvel. Then he got replaced, but they kind of felt that um, his inking ruined, not ruined, but it, it, did, it didn't bring out the best in Kirby's pencils. So yeah, let's flip ahead a little more. Ooh, look, man bats or Batman, Batman. And this is kind of cool because um, I don't think they really have too much of the other DC universe in it. It's kind of its own thing out in the far future. I wonder if Superman from uh, Kingdom Come is in there. This is kind of cool. Like, you know, you got this satellite and um, it's kind of like collage -y. This is the kind of thing we saw in um, the New Gods Omnibus in some pages. So yeah, here I guess you're seeing, maybe this guy is describing, I'm not sure. It looks like um, this guy might be an astronaut. This looks like the moon. It looks like they might be describing Earthrise from the moon. I'm not sure. And of course that's a satellite, which probably wouldn't look like that from the moon. It's too far away. Oh, more of these bat creatures. Oh, this is so much fun. So much fun. 
Oh yeah, and here's the cover of the dust jacket. It's kind of cool. Oh, there's a locust. So I guess he rides it. This is kind of like Dune, where uh, Paula Atreus, Atreides uh, captures and tames the the worms, I guess. So yeah, there's a lot to this book. This is very, very, very nice. Let's see. Oh, it looks like they're getting married. He, this looks like he's drinking from a juice box. I wonder if that's what he's doing. It's amazing how these animals learn to speak. Goodbye, Commandy. Spirit miss you. I must go, Spirit. Men are nothing but trained beasts here. Huh. So yeah, she's kind of like, what was her name? Zora, Zena? The girl from uh, the Planet of the Apes. The Watergate secrets. Oh, fun. Watergate was another thing. You never heard the end of Watergate in the 70s. And I remember like reading a Star Wars parody and one of the, it wasn't mad. Maybe it was mad, but um, maybe it was cracked. They, every one of those magazines did their own Star Wars parody. And it turned out Darth Vader was Nixon and um, he had the tapes. I can't remember what it was, but even at that point, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so sick of hearing about Nixon in this. That was years ago. I mean, of course, to my mind it was. It wasn't that long ago, really, but to my mind it was because I was a kid and time moves different, differently for us when we're kids. Some more great art. That's kind of cool. Lots of greens in this one. The Human Gophers of Ohio, Chapter 2. Oh, I just can't wait to dig into this. I wish I could read them simultaneously. I'm reading The Watchmen now, and you know, um, Ozymandias. This is spoilers if you haven't read The Watchmen, you should read it. Um, but Ozymandias, he tries to like get a glimpse of the future by watching a bunch of TV screens at once. And I kind of wish I could just like have a bunch of different screens with different comic books on it. and. The Last Gang in Chicago. This reminds me of uh, Escape from New York, like where they have their whole civilization and it's kind of a throwback. Commandy. Well, it's weird. It looks like maybe in Chicago they've recreated civilization to an extent. Oh, but that's a robot. Spoilers. So I guess I could have read the introduction. I'm spoiling it myself. Cool crab. Ali Oop. Lots of cavemen. Ooh, looks like a sentinel. Ooh, that's cool. Is this the House of Mystery? That was cool. I read the first story in, uh, is it House of Secrets or House of Mystery? I think it's House of Secrets. House of Mystery was canceled. Um, and the very first story in that book, which I don't know where it's picking off from, but because it doesn't start at one, and it's moving the house, which is the House of Mystery, and then the whole first issue is like, you know, um, Abel comes to move in to tell stories and he has imaginary friends and then Cain shows up. It's a really cool story. Look at these sharks with wings. See, I wonder, this might, you know, the books don't end till 76. Jaws came out in 76, so this predates Jaws by at least a couple of years, I would think. Ooh, nice. I just like all this stuff. Normally I don't like post-apocalyptic stuff because it's kind of messy and dirty. Oh, Superman! They do get, they do get Superman in the book somehow. There's his uniform. Wow. Oh, mighty one. Wow, the Tablet of Revelation. I wonder if they bring Superman in somehow. I wonder if they bring Hank Henshaw in. I don't know when he was created. The Gulliver Effect. Commandy. So you figure by the end of this run, he's not a boy anymore. He's got to be a young man. But I guess there's this youth thing too. You know, the youth culture was big in the 70s. It's, it kind of like ended 
after Manson, but it still continued on too at the same time. There was still this youth culture, like feeling groovy, just ate my Cheerios. Oh look, she's got weird air, hair, so she's either an alien or a really advanced person. Looks like she has some superpowers. The hotel. Come out and fight. So yeah, this looks like a good book. Let me know if you got it. We're almost done. I know there's like some stuff here at the end and people like to see what it includes, whereas House of Secrets didn't really include too much. So here we go. The world was coming to an end. So this is by Bruce Tim. And what does this say? Alter Ego. So this is the mother box files. It tells you about the characters in the book, I guess. Ben Boxer. Then you get some uh, of the sketches of Jack Kirby. Flower. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, as far as like, you know, extras in the back of the book go, there aren't too many. UFO, the wildest trip ever. I think he really loved his work. So Jack Kirby, Mike Boyer, or is it, no, Royer, and uh, D. Bruce Barry. So, oh, and then we've got Jerry Conway, who he killed Gwen Stacy and brought the Silver Age to an end. Uh, and Joe Kubert, which I, I uh, see the guy with the art school. I'm not sure, but uh, the, oh yeah, the Joe Kubert School of Cartoon and Graphic Art. I could use a class or two for my hastily drawn cartoons. So tell me what you think. Have you been looking forward to this for a long time? You know, I ordered this, then it got canceled, and I ordered it again, and then I think it got canceled again and then it got finally on so I don't know what's up with that that might be why they have so many issues with with uh, misprints so I'm not really good at figuring out misprints so if you notice any put it down in the comments let me know and I'll let everybody else know and um, remember to uh, like the video subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications and this is Super Comic Fun Time, out.